First of all, thanks for joining the first of many Skylar and Exertis um, cybersecurity webinars. My name is Matthew Swindale. I'm commercial manager for cybersecurity in UK and Europe. I'm joined by Sarah Taylor, who's the Skylar product um, manager. Um, and we also have Chris, who's available from Skylar, and he's the VP of sales. Um, so a brief history from an executive um, cybersecurity point of view. We've been looking after our partners for just shy of 35 years. Um, before, before this, we were actually originally a company called Tech Data. Um, and then 10 years ago, we were acquired by Exertis. Um, and just the other week, we were established as Exertis Cybersecurity. Now, from our point of view, we have an established pre and post sales team internally here, um, as well as a fully accredited technical team, including 25, 24 by 7, 365 internal operations center down in Basingstoke. So our, our history has traditionally always focused on your digital um, perimeter and your infrastructure. But now with the help of Skylar, we can also protect yours and your partner's physical perimeter and infrastructure. So without further ado, I will pass you over to Sarah, who's the vendor specialist for Skylar at Exertis. She'll give a very high level overview of Skylar before passing over to Chris. He'll run through a detailed overview of how we can help you and your partners going forward. Thanks, Matt. Um, as, as Matt mentioned, we are delighted to have Skylar on board as our new vendor. Uh, today, Chris will run through a selection of scenarios uh, where we believe Skylar can support and enable your partners to become more proactive when it comes to their physical, secu physical security and safety. Uh, for those of you who don't know who or what Skylar is, it processes video stream content uh, to develop meaningful insights about the activity and objects. They then verify the suspicious content in real time um, through the smart decision making algorithm information on the object, activity or identity uh, is retrieved and forwarded to the alerting protocols. Uh, technology distributes uh, alerts in real time to security response units through web and mobile channels with a relevant screenshot and complete information about the location and time of the incident. Uh, to further explain this, I'm now going to pass you over to Chris, and just to advise, there will be a chance to ask questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. So thanks for that lead in. Um, so again, to reiterate who Skyla is and what we do, Skyla develops a neural network. It's a true AI, deep learning AI that monitors video streams, RTSP streams live and in real time with the existing cameras, the existing infrastructure that's already in place and it watches for objects, actions, and anomalies. So what that means is we are watching, we've trained the AI under the umbrella of safety, security, uh, and retail, and business intelligence. So when we go through, we are watching for things like uh, guns, bikes, intruders, bags left behind, slip and falls. To say that we are a facial recognition company undersells what the neural network is capable of. So Skyla is literally a brain with a perfect memory that is capable of, of analyzing not just a single frame or a single object, but a series of frames and objects and analyzing the behavior. So when we, uh, you know, it, 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 everything from smoke to fire to basically it functions just like your brain does. Where the existing camera, the existing infrastructure that's already in place, that's the eye. Sky is the brain. So just like your eye sees something, your brain analyzes it, makes a decision, and processes it, that's exactly how Skylar works. Uh, Skylar is a server-based solution. Uh, we can reside in the cloud. We can reside on-premise. We also have an edge appliance, or we can do a hybrid mix of any of the three. So if we go through and we are talking about some of the different use cases, whether it's, uh, we'll talk about some of the different use cases in healthcare and professional sports and, and education. Uh, you know, each, each vertical has a little bit of a different challenge that, that they work for or that they look for. So, but to go through and look at some of the behaviors, um, you know, if we talk about uh, fights, slip and falls, vandalism, graffiti, all of that can be identified by, um, by Skyla. So let's start off, I'll, I'll just show you an example. Sometimes a video is worth a thousand words. So, you know, something as simple as slip and fall. We get this um, request quite a bit. You know, if somebody has a, a slip and fall episode, you go over, you help them, you, you know, give them aid. Um, if somebody is 
staging a slip and fall and they want to hit that organization with a mystery lawsuit, you know, six months down the road, hoping that it's been the video has been overwritten, then, you know, this gives the the organization an opportunity to know about that incident, archive the video, create an incident response and protect themselves at a future date. So everything from slipping and falling off stools to, you know, slipping in a, you know, in either a retail environment, whether it's an office environment, we're analyzing that slip and fall and, you know, we, we can tell that. So uh, fight detection, you know, we can do everything from setting aggressive behavior. Um, again, video is worth a thousand words. Here, somebody is coming into a uh, apartment complex, a gymnasium. Um, they're going to come in and attack somebody in the middle of the, the early morning hours. There's nobody around. Skyla is sitting there watching, and Skyla is going to analyze that behavior. And just like your brain would say, that's an aggressive, not normal behavior. Skyla does that. So we can trigger a real time alert to security and come in and, and give aid to this person. Sports stadiums, uh, everything from traffic flow to identify to heat mapping where people are going to identifying on a bolo list, you know, people that are banned from the stadium. Skyla can watch and identify those people based on a list that's kept locally from we're not we're not collecting biometric data of anybody. We're collecting just the metadata and comparing it against a person's face on the on the on the watch list. So for places that are facial friendly, uh, we can absolutely identify bad guys that are there. It can also be used to identify good guys and VIPs and things like casinos. Uh, we can also do returning customers. So if you have somebody that's shopping in a supermarket or a, you know, a, a food market, it's normal to shop in maybe one, two, three branches in one day, look at store locations. But if somebody is shopping in five, six, seven different branches of a bank or of a, a food market, that's not normal behavior. There's usually a scam associated with it, and that organization wants to identify that person when that happens. And so without, without collecting the biometric data, we're just collecting the metadata and comparing the images of the people that are walking in and out. So all of that is turned off by default and can be turned on only when people want that specific, um, that specific analytic. And we do adhere to the GDPR in Europe. We're not logging, storing, or recording any of the video. That's all still being done by the, the VMS. So what happens is the VMS splits off a parallel stream for Skyla, and then Skyla analyzes that video, just like a human would be watching a video wall, only it's Skyla, the AI watching that video wall with an unlimited number of cameras. And when it sees, if it doesn't see anything that it was told to watch for, the video has gone. But if we see something that it was told to watch for, that's when we trigger an alert to security. We also have a person search capability without using facial recognition. And so it's used based on attributes, what a person looks like, their physical attributes. So for example, if you say, I want to find the, the, the missing little boy with a backpack and a ball cap and a blue shirt, we can, we can tell Skylet to go out and we can look for on every live active camera, we can look for that person. And you know, if you're in a, a fair or a, a sports stadium where you have you know, hundreds or even thousands of cameras, like every one of those sets of camera or every camera turns into a set of eyes. Um, it can also be used to go back and review the video forensically. So if you want to breadcrumb and track it backwards, if you want to look for somebody that way as well. So lots of, and again, that's without using facial recognition, just basically the attributes what that person looks like. So things that uh, there's there's a lot of analytics that can be used in different verticals. You know the railway system, everything from tracking a person to, you know, based on their attributes to intruder detection, perimeter detection, recognition, slip and fall, smoke and fire. When we're talking about Skyla and our intruder detection, when we identify a human or a vehicle, the AI is so smart. It's not just doing a rules based pixelation change. When we identify a human as a human, we do it all the way down to the body part. So, so much as just a, a hand or a foot enters that frame or that zone, then Skyla immediately is smart enough to know that that belongs to a human at the other end. And we're going to trigger those, we're going to trigger that alert and, and let you know what, uh, you know, the, the, somebody's there. Let me show you again an example of that. 
And what you're looking at here is the Skyla dashboard. We can turn on our different, uh, different detections, whatever that organization wants. It's a browser-based dashboard. So we have Intruder. What I have turned on on our demo site here is Intruder, Shoplifting, Fight, Smoke and Fire, Gun, Thermal, Facial Wreck, Slip and Fall, Abandoned Object, uh, which is Bag Left Behind. But I'm going to show you um, the Intruder detection. So all of our alarms, when Skyla sees something, it cues them up, goes to an operator, they can look at it, um, they can determine whether it's actual or you know, take action or not. So when we go through, we, we do work with thermal cameras. So anything from, you know, seeing thermals in the background, in the pitch black to, you know, inside an office. If somebody you know, is crawling through a window, the second their foot goes through, we haven't even seen that human yet. And we, we know that that foot belongs to a, to a person. And we can go all the way down to 15 pixels per meter when identifying a, a person in a zone which in an outdoor environment allows us to cover three, four times the amount of area that a traditional single camera would be able to. So you can cover more area with fewer cameras because Skyla is better at identifying the, the threats. We can even do like anomalies if, if you're doing traffic and you see somebody get in and out of a car or a vehicle in a traffic flow where it's not normal, where you know, maybe there was an accident or a road rage incident. So security can be alert of something like that and, and deal with it before it escalates. So when we talked about traffic flow analysis, sports stadiums, retail, uh, we can heat map where people are going. We can tell you just by gathering that business intelligence passively in the background, we can track every person that's in view of it without gathering their biometric data. We're just analyzing that a human and where they're tracking, where they're walking, where they're loitering, we can tell how long people are in a trap, in a cash wrap, how long people are in a, in a uh, changing area. We can tell you where they're where they're shopping, which which you know racks or or tables are are getting the attention. So if, if you want to take that business intelligence, you can make decisions without having to guess to relocate, redirect traffic. Um, you know, if there's five people in line, a six person steps in line at a cash wrap, we can trigger an alert to a mobile app on you know, manager to say, open another cashier, um, all kinds of things that they can do to, uh, you know, enhance that customer experience. So again, that all flows under our traffic flow analysis and attribute search. And this is the business intelligence that, that Scott is doing. Um, you know, just an example of how it could be used in hotels and resorts. When somebody walks in, if anybody slips and falls, if you're tracking, if you want to look for somebody, uh, we can do parking. So if somebody's parking incorrectly, they're double parking or they park too long. Um, intruder detection lets you know who's walking around in the, the, the late hours. You know, if there's any suspicious uh, people or characters out there, um, you can track when people come in, they walk up to the front desk. Uh, we can tell if there's, you know, if it's early morning, you have limited staff. If somebody's standing there for longer than a minute, we could trigger an alert to, to staff and say, hey, we have a guest that wants to check in or needs attention at the front desk. At the same time, we're telling them if anybody, how many people are in their, their bar or restaurant area, where the people are sitting in their bar or restaurant area. We can tell them how many people are in their swimming pool. We can tell them if you wanted to take it even a step further, you could say, you know, who belongs in that swimming pool, who is a guest and who is not a guest. So Skyla is, you know, being the fact that it's a brain, it can do multiple analytics simultaneously without, you know, limiting its capabilities. Uh, we talked a little bit about intruder detection, uh, that we can go out, we're, we're accurate to, you know, 99.95% .95%, uh, filtering out those false alarms. We also do false alarm filtering, where if you take the analytics, the basic analytics that are built into a camera, basically just motion detection, so take that little image or that two, three second clip and Skyla can filter all of those upon motion detection on those clips. We can filter that and only pass through to the monitoring center or the GSOC, the actuals that actually have a person or a human in it. So instead of having many people analyzing in a large, you know, a large uh, camera environment, you can reduce the, the staff necessary to monitor those thousands or tens of thousands or even more sometimes down and, and get it done with just you know one or two people. Um, talked a little bit about car parking. Um, if somebody comes in and they park 
illegally, they park double park, they don't park properly. We can tell you, you know, we can send an alert and say, go have that car towed or whatever the organization wants to do. We can tell, count the cars, we can count highways, we can even go as far as tell you how fast vehicles are, are driving up and down, you know, a, a road. So there's, there's just a lot of intelligence that can be pulled from this that Skyler can, can watch for. Another thing for retail, abnormal shopping behavior. So Skyler can analyze the, let me show you some examples. Obviously you can never get inside somebody's head and know whether they are going to be, you know, steal or not, but you can analyze their behavior and you can determine whether or not they're shopping differently than everybody else. So for example, um, a person's there and walking, they look left, they look right, they look at the camera, and then they tuck something in their purse, their backpack, their, their bag, and then they walk, they, you know, then they walk away. Well, they, they might rock, walk right up to the cashier, pull it out and pay for it, but that's not normal shopping behavior. So we will send the alert to security. Security can watch that suspicious behavior, and then they can make the decision to act on it. So there's lots of different ways that, you know, whether it's, you know, retail store, whether it is, you know, grocery store, anything like that. So the, the, the long and the short the takeaway is Skyla works with uh, the existing cameras that are already in place. We're not asking them to buy anything special. It's kind of like if you have your your ten year old plasma TV and you you know it's perfect picture right, but you want to connect it to the internet. Well, you plug a Roku stick into it, and all of a sudden it's a smart ticket. Now, on a very simplistic level, that's very similar to camera systems. You have your camera system there, your traditional system sitting there quietly recording, which is a reactive approach. You wait for something bad to happen. You go check the video. You say, "Yep, that's the bad guy or that's the bad thing." But by then, the damage is done. So with Skyla, you take our server-based AI, you get access to the stream, their existing VMS peels off and splits off a parallel video stream for all of the cameras on that system, it is fed to our Skyla server, whether again, it's in the cloud or on-premise inside a zero trust environment, can work inside a closed VLAN. Skyla analyzes those video streams and you know, basically by plugging our server in, we turn it into a smart security system. We give it a brain. And now all of a sudden it can take those, those videos. And, you know, if you have a thousand cameras on that system, it's like having a thousand people watching everyone on a one-to-one -one basis that never blinks, never looks away, never gets tired, doesn't fall in sick. It just quietly, passively sits there and watches for exactly what it is you tell it to watch for. So, you know, some different things. Um, you know, if we're looking for, you know, fights, it can be anything for, we can set the sensitivity from anything from just watching for aggressive behavior to, you know, a knockdown, drag out, you know, punching fight. But the second Skyla sees that aggressive behavior, that's when we trigger the alerts. So we do weapons, we do guns. When we do a gun, we don't just identify the probability that a gun is a gun. <clears throat> we can identify the violence associated with it. So if you're a police officer, you have a holstered weapon. We don't trigger the alert until somebody's hand touches that weapon. The second somebody's hand touches it, that's when Skyla gets excited and starts sending the alerts. Another thing that differentiates us from all other analytics on the market is we work with moving backgrounds. So dash cams, body cams, drones, PTZs, it makes no difference to us. We work with all of the different, uh, you know, anything that has a moving background, which is, is really beneficial if you're, even if you're doing intruder detection and you've got a camera posted on a pole and it's swaying in the wind, for Skyline, that makes no difference. We're not going to trigger all the alerts that, and all the noise that you're going to get from, from that, uh, Know, camera that is swaying in the wind. When we're talking about smoke and fire, we can analyze everything from wildfires, you know, on hillsides, everything, right? So there are a couple of questions so far. Um, you know, is there a minimum spec of CT CCTV that Skyla has to be used on? 
uh, can it be legacy? Well, this is an example of legacy use. So it kind of depends on the analytic that you want to put in place. But typically on object detection, what we prefer is a, a 720 um, HD uh, stream. So that's pretty much an entry level. But if you do go back and you want to go further back, so long as we get at least 15 pixels per meter, we can do intruder detection, for example. So another question, how are we best to approach existing CCTV installations to add on Skyland? Should we be looking for particular customer uh, uh, use cases? Well, when you walk in, we're not trying to replace anything that they're doing, all right, any of their existing cameras. We're not saying that, you know, you have to replace your whole infrastructure. So it depends on the security cha challenges. So if you're in a, um, you know, a, a grade school, for example, the, the things that are important to a school, number one is, you know, intruders. They want to know when people are in a place where they shouldn't be, fight detection or aggressive behavior. Um, also, schools like to know if there is a weapon so we can watch for the guns. They also like facial recognition. They want to know if they have a banned student or there's a parent that is a known troublemaker or somebody. So they walk, they step in front of the camera. They can, they can be alerted when somebody is on there. Um, you know, if you're walking into a retail environment, they'll have entirely different use cases. They want to know if there's, you know, that person walking into 10 of their bank locations in the same day, uh, you know, with some sort of a scam. They want to know, uh, you know, if you're in a retail environment, they want to know, you know, where people are going, where their traffic flow, and use that for the business intelligence to, you know, generate more revenue. Uh, another question, how long does typical installation take? It, it depends on the scope. They're pretty they're pretty quick and easy. So if it is a cloud server, uh, we tie in, we have plugins for all the major VMSs, whether that's Milestone, Genetech, Exact, NX. Uh, we, we integrate with a number, probably over 25 or 30 different VMS systems. And so they feed that, that stream either to our cloud-based server or to our on-prem server. And then once that's set up, uh, we can e we we get remote access, preferably if it's um, preferably a VPN remote access. Um, if they have strict security requirements, zero trust environment, then we do supervised access with a bridge laptop. But typically, you can you know it depends on the scope and the size of the installation. But you know you could set up a, a trial with with customers, you know, a couple cameras, one or two analytics. Uh, set up a trial for a week where they can test it, feel it in their own environment. You can do that in less than an hour. So it's it's pretty quick. Another question. Does this help to reduce customers' overall running costs for physical security and provide a good return on investment? Absolutely, because if you have a GSOC or a monitoring center that has to that has to analyze and, and watch every one of these false, you know, every one of these detections that come in. You know, every one of the alerts, every time it's a, a tree blowing in the wind, every time you have an animal, every time you have, you know, a false positive, then that has to be investigated by a person. You have to look at it and they have to make the decision, you know, is this an actual event or is it not? So when you're, if you have a, a camera system, you have a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand cameras that generated, you know, if you would just have... <clears throat> You know, if you just have one one false positive per day for a thousand cameras, you know, that's still a thousand alerts. But if Skyler can filter out 99% of those, now all of a sudden, all of those people that it would take to, to watch all of, investigate all of those detections, you can do that with one or two people. So you can really help with the labor costs. Not to mention the, the soft costs like slip and falls, helping with future legal, avoid future legal expenses. Uh, retail, take this information and increase your sales using the, the business intelligence, um, all the way to just, you know, helping society and doing good and identifying, you know, threats before they escalate. Um, another question, have you got any examples of how Skylight can be implemented within the education sector? Um, absolutely. Um, Everything from, like as I mentioned, you know, fights, aggressive behavior, intruders. 
It could be something even in a, in a university environment. If somebody is in the library studying until, you know, two o'clock in the morning and they leave, you know, security, some, some organizations will offer a, an escort for people that want that to walk them back to their, you know, to their car, or their, their dorm room or wherever, you know, wherever they live. <laughs> but Skyla can also alert and let the security know when a person's leaving that library, for example. So they can take over the camera, the PTZs, and they can follow that person all the way to wherever they're going and give them that extra comfort that, that somebody is watching out for their safety in real time. You're not just waiting for something bad to happen and then check the video the next day and say, yep, that's the bad guy or the bad thing. So it, it absolutely can be used um, any number of ways in education. Um, you know, for it identifies when people are in the wrong place or in a place where they shouldn't be during a time when they should not be there. Um, identify the fights. We can identify any flash present pop-ups. You know, we can do crowd density. So if you set a zone in a park and all of a sudden, you know, 50 people show up in this park, we can send an alert to security and say that there's there's a mass demonstration that is starting to form in this area. You know, all this different security and safety. Um, even if there's constructions of when we're talking about safety, you know, whether it's the slip and fall, whether it's personal safety for, you know, helmets and safety vests in a construction area where people should, you know, be wearing their, their PPE, but they're not, will trigger that alert and, uh, and, you know, help keep people more safe. Sarah, Matt, Matthew, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Yeah, thank you. And thank you for everybody joining. Um, nothing to add to the, um, presentation but what I will say is that Anastasia and, and Chris will pass the details of the attendee to myself and Sarah um, and we'll follow up with all of our details of how we can help further from an exertist point of view as well. Um, this is the first demonstration that we've done to our partners, um, really impressive in my opinion um, and again we'll we'll be contacting the, the guys on the call today um, to get their feedback and, and see how we can progress further. So you know what a quick high level overview the capabilities of Skyla it is it is literally the best you know I'm a little biased I'll give you that but it is the best analytic available anywhere ever <laughs> so it uh, you know AI has come a long way uh, we are a major developer a major leader in that field um, as it comes to computer vision. Brilliant. Thanks, Chris. And thanks, Anastasia, for setting everything up. Um, again, just to repeat, we'll get a list of all the attendees. We'll send out further information from an exertist point of view, as well as from Skylar. Um, again, to everybody who's attended today, thank you very much. We hope you found it informative and we will speak to you all soon.